everyone, and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me as always is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Still uh, socially distancing, uh, even though I actually saw you yesterday. Uh, just podcast. We just socially distance while podcasting. Yeah. yeah we just, honestly, we just didn't feel like recording yesterday. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm socially distancing other than I'm shopping around for a pressure washer, you know. Well, yeah, I was, uh, I was actually out today uh, grabbing an online order I made from the Home Depot. Um, I'm replacing all the, <clears throat> the older brass knobs in my house with, you know, uh, nickel and hinges and paint, painting everything and, uh, you know, needed various little things for, for some other projects. I needed some uh, fine files for our guitar necks uh, that that I'll be working on. Um, so yeah, I, I went in there and I was telling you that a uh, week before last or whatever, I had attempted to go to a Home Depot and they had one of those lines because in Ohio they have a provision in the <clears throat> stay-at-home order where you have to, or you can't have any more than so on and so many people in the store per square footage. So I saw that line and everybody's, you know, right on top of each other too. It's not like they were really truly distancing themselves at all. And I looked at that line and said, I'm not waiting in a line. I'm just not doing this today. <laughs> so I, I, I went ahead and I, I did go to Lowe's yesterday for a few things and it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Uh, there was no line to get in, but there was somebody like counting people, <clears throat> uh, counting people that were in the store. And then I went today and, and I just, I was like, huh, I'll just put on an online order. They can hold it for me at the desk and it'll be fine. So first observation, um, the employees at a lot of these places are, are tired of it. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah, sure. They're yeah, <laughs> they're tired of it. Um, I think they're tired of you know all the precautions, and this is just being honest about the subject. I mean, I think we're all a little tired of it by now, but they're tired of that, and they're tired of customers not being nice. Oh, uh, yeah. as I walked in, it was there was a long line, but it was a brief line. Um, so it was, it was pretty much in and out, you know, or in the line and then into the store. So normally the Home Depot, and this is really in depth Star Wars knowledge right here, but <laughs> the Starship Home Depot, uh, the Star Destroyer, Super Star Destroyer Home Depot, um, they have a, like a two lane online checkout counter and then they have like customer returns. Well, in lieu of this, because there was going to be a line, they just put everyone in the return section. So I'm like, I walk up, it's like, hi, picking up. It's like, oh, you got to go over there. It's like she had obviously been saying this, that the employee had obviously been saying this several times. It's like, well, it says online pickup, and you didn't like cover up your sign. So I don't know what you expect. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so I get in the line, um, and one of the employees had the forethought to go through the line and actually identify those people who had returns and those people who were just picking up. Because while I was in line and a few people ahead of me, and that was going slow uh, because returns take time, she actually put everything on a pallet and or on a you know, cart and then uh, basically had it ready for me. It's like, oh, yeah, you're good to go. Here you go. And then I walked out. I was like, that, that you see, that's thinking. That's thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> but while I was in the line, there was this older guy who goes like, <laughs> here's the line, right? And he just like goes straight up to a, to an open spot. And like, it's like, Hey, sorry, there's a line. And there was like another lady in front of me. I was like, yeah, this is the line. And you know what? He did not get in that line either. He, he literally just stood up there and forced a conversation with the person at the desk. Um, <laughs> This is the kind of stuff that 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 we're seeing right now, and and obviously we still want we still want to keep safe. We still want to make sure that everybody is staying healthy and whatnot. Uh, but it is summer. Uh, there are well, summer. It's spring, springish. <laughs> we're in Ohio. Well, we a don't, day like this, it certainly feels like yeah, summer. We don't. We don't. <laughs> so know. everyone's getting their projects started. Yeah, we don't know our. We don't know 
times of year in Ohio. Seasons mean nothing yeah. here. It's Ohio out <laughs> <laughs> five minutes later. It's still Ohio out. It's about 20 degrees lower than it was, but it's still Ohio. Out. Exactly. So anyway, it was just, you can see the, the people that are just not taking this well anymore. Um, I went through a drive through the other day and I ordered a sandwich and they didn't have that. They didn't have a lot of stuff. Like there are uh, fast food that do not have food or all of their food. Um, the Chinese I restaurant that happened at Taco Bell last night. There did was like you? maybe five things on the menu that they had left. It's like, Darth, we can't do chalupas. We don't have, <laughs> you know, hey, we can't do chalupas. We can't do beef of any kind. It's like, what can what? you do? They didn't have beef. Yeah. No, Whoa. they were out of beef. Whoa, that's like, like well, everything. Can, so you can do chicken, right? Yeah. Get a chicken quesadilla? That's my favorite. Well, well, they couldn't do nachos. They couldn't do pizzas, anything like that. They uh, they had the quesadillas. They had like the loaded potato grillers and basic bean burritos. That was it. <laughs> Dang. That's wild. Well, the, the Chinese yeah. restaurant down the road from me that I really like uh, opened up uh, the other day. And I was actually going to pop in there after I got all my stuff today, and I, I wound up not going. But um, I, I would like to. But yeah, I mean, th- th- there are definitely some concerning things going on. And um, <laughs> also, down by my house, there is a park. It's a nice little park. But the um, the little icy truck has been parking there. <laughs> <laughs> so... And it, it, again, I think I think that this is the natural course of things. People will eventually just do kind of what they want, what's comfortable, you know. Because there were a ton yeah. of people when I was pulling out. There were actually, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say a ton, maybe like ten, fifteen people going to that ice truck to get their Jeez. to get their flavored ice. And it's just like, oh, right, social distancing, staying home. Got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do see quite it's a few. It's weird that you have that because my hometown does not have any type of ice cream, shaved ice, any of that anymore. Well, which I'm sure you're aware of that, but well, I mean, there there's still the two ice cream spots, but are they even open? Mm-hmm. You know, because no, like so, so much of that they're stuff not. isn't open. But th- this is yeah, this was yeah, just we don't have that. I think Dairy Queen even uh, closed. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, th- this is a local in our town local kind of institutional thing they have a i think they actually had a like a small brick and mortar store but now they just run the run the little food truck with the ice and they do the first fridays and all that kind of stuff so they're you see them around quite a bit but uh god i don't don't even know if we have like the ice cream man you know do 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 (laughs) (laughs) that was always kind of creepy because it was always just a little too slow. Hey, I still remember you running out, you know, wanting the ice cream and so <laughs> forth when we were kids. I honestly, I could have cared less. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I never really had that kind of sweet tooth. And you know, if we were like out at grandma's or something, she always had ice cream in the fridge anyway. So yeah, and it was usually better anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys at home are staying well. Um, you know, we're still still kind of getting through a lot of what we're, what we're dealing with as a, as a world. And, uh, you know, I, I see sooner rather than later, we're going to start getting back to some semblance of normal, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Cause I think, uh, I, I, I do think I am starting to see the fraying edges start to, uh, produce tears in the fabric of, yeah. of the, <laughs> the social constraints we've been putting on ourselves over the past, you know, couple months. Well, even, uh, you know, if you pay attention close enough while you're shopping, like I was today, uh, the place I was in had very narrow aisle really yeah. for what's going on right now. You should only have one person down an aisle. At mm-hmm. once. And that's, that's actually a thing for a lot of stores. They're making you go one way, yep. uh, down the aisle. And you can tell people will be coming down the aisle. They'll see you. They'll get really frustrated. And then they'll walk off, and then like a minute later, they'll come back to see if you're done yet. Yep. I had a couple of things that took a minute to find what I needed, and I made eye contact with some people, and I just, I know they're cussing me out. It's like, walk past me. I'm not going to breathe on you. Yep. I'm not going to look in your direction. Just, you know. 
Why well, I yeah, I had a similar kind of similar situation where unfortunately I think one of our one of our grocery stores here does a really poor job of planning its restocking. Cause like literally midday, they'll have a bunch of stuff in the middle of the aisles, which oh, wow. which I don't know if they're doing that on purpose to try and get people on the the larger aisles to kind of like do the natural flow of traffic. But people don't do that in stores normally. You know, we drive yeah. on the right hand, the right side of the road in America. Uh, you know, the right way to drive. Uh, <laughs> but we don't do that in stores. I mean, I do, but mo- a lot of people don't. I do too. But a lot of people That's don't. True. And, you know, I was going down an aisle and it was a little clustered, but there were several things in the middle of the aisle and then a couple people in the aisle. And towards the end, and this is what irritates me, and this happens normally, not just now, but like you'll have, you'll have like a couple guy with the cart or girl with the cart, whatever. And then the other person like directly in front. So it's, they're, they're literally stopping up the aisle because they're, yeah, they're, they're blocking, blocking. Both lanes. And, you know, I I stood a little ways back with my cart and I stared at him. I am a starer, by the way. I'm also the guy that... I am too. I I get in trouble sometimes because of it because I'll just just glare at people if they're doing something dumb. I mean, it's like, well, uh, do you want to make a scene? Because you're the one in the wrong. But I'm also the kind of guy on the road that if I'm if I'm going at an adequate speed and somebody is trying to literally ram up my backside, I will slow down. I won't break, but I will slow down. I will just So you're just like that. <laughs> yes, I will ease off the gas and either make you pass me or if it's on a two lane, I, <laughs> uh this is really bad, but like there there are times when like I've I've, you know, it's not necessarily intentional, but on like a two lane and you'll have you know, oh, they're trying to get ahead. They're trying to get ahead of me, but there's also another person in the other lane, and they're just crisscrossing. Sometimes I'll just hover right there with the yeah. car to the side of me, just for a little <laughs> bit. It's like, huh, you're in a big hurry. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> it's really mean, but no. In, in the store, is I, I, I have a lot of patience, but at the same token, I don't have patience for just you know poor manners. If you are yeah, displaying I poor agree. manners, I do not have any sort of time for that. And I will it, make sure that you know that I know, and then it'll get real awkward real quick. <laughs> my my biggest pet peeve is people who decide to just stop in the middle of an aisle and oh, talk yeah. to someone else for like 20 minutes, like mm-hmm. it's a social event yep. at Walmart, which it is here. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And there's just enough space that you can kind of squeeze a third cart through the middle but you really shouldn't yeah yeah and i'll just i'll barrel right past people if they're doing that well and, and like stagger stagger yeah. or get run over i don't well don't and that's the bad. other issue too though is that you know th- this is basic human nature uh we do crave even introverts crave uh physical you know like contact with other people and it's not the same over the phone having that sort of ability to be face to face I think is important to just humankind. And so where's the only place I can go and see people at a store. So unfortunately that does become social hour for a lot of people. And I think, I think we do have to watch that. Um, We do need to watch that because we do have folks that are in our communities and, you know, and whatever that are vulnerable, that are particularly vulnerable to any type of sickness. And we, and we have to, we have to be responsible for them as well. I have a buddy who has a, uh, his son had a kidney transplant, uh, here in the past and he cannot take this. It might, I mean, the, if he were to get this, it might, it, you know, might be it. So it's, it's, uh, you know, you, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. But I do see that the fabric is fraying. So anyway, I guess let's go ahead and jump into the main part of why we why we put this podcast I out. I think we just had our main part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the social hour, because you haven't heard enough about the coronavirus and how people are angry about it. Maybe they're feeling a little shattered. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Episode 11, season seven, counting down to the end. Part three of four entitled Shattered. And uh, man, 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 man. Again, I, you know, it's. Holy it's crap. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, another insane episode. I still have to say part two is still my favorite. Um, but this, yeah. this was awesome. So just, I, I guess before we jump into details, what, uh, what'd you think about this one? Uh, I thought this was a pretty, pretty much perfect episode. Honestly, uh, it's everything I really wanted to have happen. I don't want to jump too far ahead and spoil it right away, but, uh, yeah, for what we've talked about and the direction we thought that they should take i think it's flawless uh, mm-hmm. it answered a lot of questions for us didn't really add any new questions i don't feel at least uh no plot holes whatsoever no good, right good emotional moments it felt i don't know there was parts of this that felt it made it feel more like a movie than a tv show just some of the more dramatic points in it mm-hmm. um, yeah i thought this was an excellent episode i can't wait how to see how they tie this all up and yeah the last four episodes i don't care how bad the fourth one is it's still the best it's probably the (laughs) i don't want to say that the bad bad shows up no hey ahsoka (laughs) we didn't get turned either we'll be your friends throws them in the lava pit and moves so far (laughs) Nah, bad bad true. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were bad. <laughs> nah, they're okay, but no, realistically, this is the best story of Dark, I think, in Clone Wars. Uh yeah, I, I think I think so as well. And the the thing that makes it so cool is that we can we can tie it into things we remember from the movies and think about, oh my god, this is the point where Anakin was, you know, butchering uh, all the Padawans. Oh, this was yeah. the moment when Commander Cody turned on Obi Wan. Uh, This was the moment when, you know, whatever, uh, you know, there are so many different things that we can say that we can tie to the existing lore. And it's all this is all in the background. And I think there are a couple things in here that you kind of think, oh, what if this could have happened at this point? Then could this have been different or whatever? So I, I, I think I think it was done very, very well. And I'm also looking forward to the conclusion and uh, hopefully a a, a, a a release like a, an actual <clears throat> like a full scale release movie type. You know, wouldn't it be cool if they once this is concluded and they they sort of uh, stitch it together? If they did like a like a limited theater like a theatrical release? Oh man, that would be cool. And another thing, if you release this part on DVD, just this, uh, there's there is some. Uh, alternate endings and Mm -hmm. things that weren't completely fleshed out that actually took the time to animate all that perfectly polish it out yeah that would be i would gladly pay for it well i don't know i think i'll wait for it on vhs though so i don't believe in dvds do you need that (laughs) what is that Oh goodness! So yeah, well, well I, 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 gosh, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's kind of hard to think about the fate of movie theaters, like when that that industry will get back. But I would love to see. It. I think I would go watch it in a theater for that ex- for, for the too. for the experience of the theater, and then just to see it all in one. But yeah, I, I think it'd be cool to have it, you know, actually stitched together into a real movie format. Uh, you know, people add, rag. I'd like to add a score to it. Um, I feel sure. like there's some music in it, but it's, it's a little bit more g- generic. So yeah, getting a, a true Star Wars score added to That'd that. That'd be would neat. Be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That would be neat. I mean, we, we rag on the original Clone Wars movie. <laughs> Not a, not attack of the clones. Uh, sometimes but, for valid reasons, <laughs> but it'd be kind of neat to like at the end. Uh, unlike the way you started, you made it one that everybody really likes. <laughs> end it with a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and roll through the episode here. Uh, we did leave off the last episode with the capture of the Darthiest of all malls epic lightsaber fight in that last episode really really good 
And now we're kind of dealing with uh, some of the cleanup and aftermath of uh, of the this little almost civil war, like short civil war. Um, you know, we have uh, so Ahsoka coming down with Maul, meeting up with Bo Katan for a little bit here. Uh, you did see Bo gave her back her lightsabers that she dropped. I actually kind of think that nice heartfelt goodbye between them. Well, I think that those things are, are very important because, you know, you constantly talk about plot holes and it's nice to see, Oh yeah. How did she get her sabers back? And it was very quick as like, she just handed them off like batons, but like, Oh yeah, we don't need a comic to explain this with (laughs) unlike Luke's lightsaber, you know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, but you're right. I, I did like this, this kind of, um, conversation, because even Bo's kind of like, you know, or Ahsoka had said, uh, we're, you know, they need a new leader. She's like, I don't know necessarily that I can be my sister or anything like that. And again, you you, you got to think about this is the, uh, they will not meet again for some time yeah. here. So that that i think is is kind of cool just to sort of you know what what did what did ahsoka say i've learned from a lot of people or the best people and you're one of them or something like that isn't that what she said yeah it was very it, it was strange because there was a lot of respect obviously shown on both sides but it was yeah. a very formal goodbye i mean they weren't you know they're not besties by the end of this they're very serious about what's going on and, well uh, bo, bo has always striked me as kind of a um, a character who never got to, uh, be a kid. So there's almost a bit of awkwardness with that kind of thing. She, she's a warrior. She even says that I don't know how to do anything else, but fight. I wish basically. I was good at something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those kind of people are not necessarily known for their affection. <laughs> and even Ahsoka, you know, we've talked about this before too. Ahsoka has always been this kind of ambiguous sort of character on a lot of fronts, almost, uh, almost a little naive to certain things that go around her em- emotionally kind of. Um, and it's made her a very interesting character. But um, again, getting just into the crazy here, uh, you know, call from the council. Uh, is Master Skywalker there? Oh, he was there. He was there, uh, you know, when I left. But when she gets back in, Anakin is gone. And they specifically say he's going to talk to the Chancellor. And it's like, oh, well, this is when all of the, <laughs> it all goes downhill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and, and the coolest part of this scene is uh, this is literally right. I'm I'm not sure if everyone will catch it right away, but uh, so they make the exact same comments they do in Revenge of the Sith, mm-hmm. and it's right when they cut communications with the rest of the council, and it's just Mace and yep. Yoda, and was Obi Wan in that as well? Mm-hmm. Going to blank now. I don't believe he was. No, because no, he no. says that he's he's on Utapau at that point. Yeah, he was um, engaging Grievous. So yeah, so Yoda and Mace, you know, this is literally right after Yoda. You know, says we need to be very careful with what we do now, and we get to see exactly what happens after that with Ahsoka, and the tie-in is just so flawless. You know, let me let me run this by you because there are a couple things about the scene I want to talk about. The first one is, I think that I really dislike Mace Windu in this portrayal, but I think I liked him more in the movies because it was Samuel L. Jackson. But now. First of all, the way he talked to Ahsoka, um, I was like, yeah, this citizen. this yeah, is why me off. this is why you're dead. This is why the Jedi are over and it's your guys' fault. This is exactly why. Because yeah, because he thinks he's above them and can talk to him as a superior when really so you're 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 a servant to them. If you followed your religion properly, you're their servant. And yeah. you're treating them like garbage. It it was so annoying because like even Ahsoka here, I mean she's she's still very clear because even Yoda, in a way, he, you know he's Yoda is is not necessarily feeble. Oblivious. Well, he's not he's not feeble, but he's showing a lot of vulnerability here. Where he's like, you know, when when she tells like I do it for the Republic, it's like, but not for the Jedi. 
you know, almost like a childlike hopefulness in him that says that Ahsoka will come back to us. And she does still call him master. Yeah. So there is still a respect oh. there. Oh, I, I, I don't think anybody could disrespect Yoda, although we have definitely had conversation, especially if you go back and listen to our episode on Master and Apprentice and kind of some of the, the display that Yoda and the council had during that book. But there's, there's always going to be a love for Yoda because he is wise. He was uh, kind of, he was issuing caution here, but at the same token, he was like, but I don't have a better solution to this. Yeah. I or, can't fix this. Yeah. You know, or he, he's, just, he's accepting we're too far gone. I can't really fix this. Yes. At this point. Exactly. And, and I think that this is more the tie into why his exile was the way it was, as opposed to not being able to defeat Sidious because more so than not, he kind of, he kind of gave up on his own creed. He kind of just let things play in motion and didn't necessarily assert himself in the end when maybe he yeah. should have. Yeah. And actually, if you look back, uh, maybe about five minutes before this in the episode, when Bo's still talking to Ahsoka, Ahsoka is actually a perfect example of what went wrong with the Jedi because one, obviously the Jedi didn't back her mm -hmm. with no, with no, concrete evidence they didn't back her they never apologized to her after they basically screwed her over yep but also what she says in this episode is a bit heartbreaking in a way from the moment she began her training the second she became a padawan you know before that as a youngling she's taught to be a peacekeeper and to love all people and you know do all these mm things passively and be good and just and the second she becomes a padawan she goes straight into a war zone yeah and she never leaves that war zone yeah that is all she knows as a jedi and that's yeah. just it it's proof to the failure of the jedi order no yep. you know they're, they're raising these younglings and it, it brings the question what kind of jedi would they have been after the war mm. all these younglings all these padawans who nothing but warfare you know would they adapt back to a peacekeeper role after the war was over that's tough i mean that's tough and we we do see that in in legends where you know we had a ton of these little you know these young jedi who luke had kind of trained and they are still dealing with kind of a lot of the the mop up of of the empire still the for, formation of the Republic, the formation of the Jedi Order again, and then the, the threat of the Yuuzhan Vong later. And they were so ready to fight. They were so ready to prove themselves Prove in themselves. a fight that, again, they, they had kind of lost track of what it kind of was to be, to be Jedi. So, yeah, that was, that was very sad and... Um, <clears throat> It's obviously not something that uh, that can ever be taken back. Now, one other thing here I did want to point out because, you know, <laughs> the call ends, you know, you turn off hologram. And Rex, Rex was also, you could see he was taken aback by Mace's words as well. But Rex then says, he commented after, on it. Yep. After the, the call ends, he says, um, you didn't tell him about what Maul said about Anakin. Now, I want to think here a little bit. Do you think that if Ahsoka had told the council Maul's vision, do you think, A, would they have listened and, or cared? Or, or, would they, or if they had listened, would they have been better prepared when facing Palpatine? I think their distrust to the Sith probably would have clouded their judgment a bit in that respect. But Mace's hatred for Anakin probably would have led him to believe it i think he might have been the only one to believe that honestly mm. because he already sensed the hatred in anakin and him turning so i think that could have been potentially different had he known when he saw anakin that maybe he should you know put himself in a defensive guard you know not be so vulnerable 
Well, that uh, yeah, and that's the scene, though, right? I mean, he he's literally got the the chancellor down at this point, and you know, old Palps needs to learn how to use force lightning a little bit better. But it, it, it's always <laughs> his downfall. He so he's getting. You know, everyone makes the argument that he let him do it. I truly think that Mace bested him. I truly believe that because he channeled his force power against him. I think. You know, I he, think he was unique. I think it's hard. I think it is. I think it's a tough narrative because I think you could, you could take the story either way. You know, if you're going to talk about, you know, this was still the plan by the chancellor by Palpatine, uh, then this is the ultimate way to turn Anakin to turn against the Jedi, like for real. Or you could say that Mace had bested him and, you know, it, it's just a, another tool. It, it, again, it all leads down to a decision. How impactful do you think it would have been if, say, Palpatine had just zapped and killed Mace Windu right in front of Anakin? Do you think that Anakin, that the claws were is still in so much that he would have not been able to say anything else like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll join you, even though you just literally murdered everyone around me type of deal in cold blood, and I had I, no I had no hand in it? I. I think it would have been harder for him to accept what Palpatine did had it been anyone but Mace Windu. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but anyway, again, they hated each other. So yeah, yeah, but hard to tell. But back to your point though, uh, in that, in that moment, <clears throat> Mace was not anticipating Anakin. Even if they, even if they did have a dislike between them, he still trusted. I think that Anakin was a Jedi. And that was yeah. something that he could he could get behind. He's like, okay, I know you've been groomed. I know there's something going on, but listen, you're still a Jedi. I'm trusting that you're going to do the right thing because the Force guides us and the Force is with us type of deal, which even then he already... You fi- could argue that too. Well, he already <laughs> acknowledged that the Force really wasn't with them in totality yeah. earlier. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. But again, as... As you know, the council fades out. It's like okay, this is like directly when we get to the point where the council members go to confront Palpatine, and this is the th- this is the last time that Ahsoka is going to talk to any of these people, and oh, oh, oh some of them are going to be dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, and interestingly enough, Ahsoka even has uh, a premonition of what happens during that confrontation, you know, you even yeah. get original audio from revenge of a Sith play. Yeah. And that was that obviously once they get onto the ship and are, are heading towards Coruscant, uh, there was, you know, we have a part where, uh, Rex is going in for the newest briefing and, you know, Soka doesn't join him. It's like, ah, oh, no, nah, go ahead, do your thing. I'll just be out here looking at, looking at this it's rather, obvious. this, this rather disappointing, uh, hyperspace window we have here. I don't know about Which you. I almost I d- thought was one of those movie moments, even though it wasn't necessarily a great one. Yeah, it did feel more cinematic than the TV series usually did. It was yeah, just it was obvious wild. what's about to happen. So obvious what's about to happen. But it, it was yeah, I know. But it was wild because yeah, she feels the the death and the destruction and everything, and she's visibly rocked by it. And I saw somebody put together a picture with her, and then. Um, uh, a couple other Jedi that that had been uh, uh, Cal Kestis's master from yes, and yep, then yep. there was one other, one or two other um, Jedi in that you know that they were having that visible reaction, and uh, then you know she kind of starts to go to the briefing room, and we we have that ex- execute order sixty six, and and as she sees Rex we have the tro- the we have two troopers kind of behind her they're raising their guns and i thought this is this was the most interesting thing though so rex is still he 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 is taken over by the chip but you can see there's something within him that is he's visibly fighting which is odd because that's not been something that we've seen we've just Again, it's been a flip of a switch, but with Rex, he he's even you know he drops his helmet, his hands are shaking as he's pulling his blasters, and then you know he yells out you know about fives. 
so that Ahsoka can kind of figure <clears throat> figure out a little bit of what happened. And then we have, again, just a really, in my opinion, really, really epic scene where she's kind of battling the troopers, uh, but deflecting all of their shots up uh, so that yeah. she can escape to the next level. That was really cool looking. Yeah, and I mean, uh, uh, Ahsoka's an amazing Jedi. She's very powerful, but it kind of begs the question, you know, you see all these scenes in Revenge of the Sith of Jedi masters, <clears throat> masters who have been, you know, doing this for twice, three times the amount of time as Ahsoka, and they're all bested by simple clone troopers firing. But, uh, but uh, that begs the question: Who's the Force with? Maybe the Force really is with Ahsoka because she was turning away from all the things that led to this point, and you know, kind of saying it's like, oh, well, you know, mystical Force being up there. Oh yes, yes, I will only be with Ahsoka now. Do everything, little Padawan. <laughs> Uh, she was able to best Maul in a way that most Jedi couldn't. Yep. I mean, even Qui Gon couldn't defeat Maul in a battle. And yes, he well, was a little older and no, he was weaker. And there's I, a lot to discuss with that. I still that have I still have theories about. I think he knew that that had to happen, but that was some prophecy stuff, yeah. and and we kind of discussed that a little bit in our Master and Apprentice series. I I yeah, but anyway. That and that that that's always a discussion that comes up. It's like who's the most powerful Jedi? And you know what? Who was never defeated? Yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi. He was yeah. never defeated. Except, yep. you know, once with like Dooku, but you know, he didn't he yeah, you know, he didn't kill him, so <laughs> I don't know. I it, it just it just showcases how powerful Ahsoka is mm -hmm. and how in tune with the force she is. And yes, you could make the argument too. And I kinda agree with you that the Force allowed her to tap into an amount of power that most Jedi can't to stay focused enough to deflect all those blasts or bolts. Mm -hmm. um, there's one little strange thing after that, though, that kind of, I don't know, I've thought about it a little bit now, and I, it still doesn't sit well with me. Um, so with what we've been told so far about the inhibitor chips, once that order was placed, it like you said, it was a flip of a switch mm -hmm. and all the clones mm -hmm. knew what they needed to do. So why does Rex then command them like, Hey, okay. So Palpatine said this, we now have to kill all yeah. Jedi and, Mongol and all this. Like, why did he have to say that if they all did? Well, and yeah, that was and, enough. And obviously some of them did do because the two that were with Ahsoka instantly right. knew what they had to do. Too. Well, so, yeah. I I know, that was just kind of strange. Right. Whew, excuse me, blah. I thought about that a little bit too, um, because it, you know, you'd you'd given all these clones all these all this personality, but when you look at the movie, it was all just again like they almost felt just like zombies, you know, not yeah. non speaking, I mean, they were just, like just droids. But yeah, I so I I don't know. I thought that was a little a little strange, but at the same token. At the same token, they they have to strategize. So I think that just goes back to the soldiering. It's like, okay, reiterate the order and let's go get her type of deal. One other thing I want to talk about too before we move on. Um, so there are officers on this ship that are not clones. <laughs> so either yeah. A, what happened to these officers, or B, were they all smiling at and waving at Ahsoka knowing... Uh, she's dead here in a little bit. Hey, good job. You got them all. Good. Yeah. yeah. War's over. Woo. What happened? Well, and that's the thing. What happens to those officers? Do they become moths eventually? Were they already with Palpatine? Did they know nothing? Were they killed along with the Jedi? What happened? Well, and, and yeah, it's like, do you think any of them were going to like arm up? It's like, wait, what are we doing? And then the clones had to be like, oh, no, no, there's an order. Uh, they're, they're traitors. We have to take them out. And they're like, Right, kill all the Jedi. Okay, sounds um sounds. Yes, the commander good. that's with Ahsoka since the beginning of the series. Like, okay, yes, clearly Ahsoka's a traitor. I agree. Yeah, so I I, <laughs> no, I, that, it. I think that that's you know you could plot hold that a little bit, but let's let's go ahead and yeah. roll on to our droid episode. They had to get one in. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was it, R3 or R5, man? They, uh, they had to get the droids in. R7. R7. I believe there I was, was an complete, R7. And, I was completely oh wrong. Oh, my God. The beeping was annoying. I can't even think of what how it went now. <laughs> well, so listen, bad. we... I think we joked about this at one point and we were like, Oh, they're going to be a droid episode. Well, guess what? They got the droids in there, uh, to help us. So five out. minutes though. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fine. It was cute. They're all like, Oh, beep, boop, 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 boop. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Beep, boop, boop, boop. You know, j- it'll be fine. Well, you know, just come on and help me. Oh, beep, boop, 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 boop. And there you go. <laughs> they, you know, that amazes me too. Palpatine thought to program all these phones, but not the droids. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot there that does you know there there's some that doesn't make any sense, uh, but it is what it is. You know we'll kind of get to it when we get to it. Uh, but anyway, she does enlist the help of uh, what is it three or four droids to sort of you know effectively try and help Rex. Um, she yeah. does free Maul. There was a kill order given on Maul. And she does stop that from happening. And, you know, again, not joining forces, but, you know, does kind of like, hey, get out there and cause some chaos. And, uh, you know, he, he does, without saying it, he does kind of ask for a lightsaber. It's like, ah, are you nuts? But yeah. <laughs> this begs another question, because after we see the destruction that Maul is able to do, um, which was very violent, decapitations and uh, amputations of arms. Arm severing. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think, <clears throat> say let's let's reverse everything in like a mirror universe where instead of Jedi, it's all just Sith. And the Jedi, and, and the Emperor who actually is a Jedi instead of a Sith in this mirror universe is like, you know, I gotta take out the Sith. Oh, the Sith. Their time is over. The time of the Jedi is now. And do you think the Sith would have necessarily had as much of a problem if they were all just like just Sith because they don't have the attachment to the troopers as much as what, uh, you know, the Jedi do because they're making friends. They're supposed to be on the light side. But (laughs) Maul took down all these guys with like ripped out pieces of metal from the wall and just the force. Obviously, I know you can take down a force wielder with enough blaster bolts but just the thought of if we were in a mirror universe do you think that a jedi emperor magical jedi emperor could like plan this kind of coup against the sith well realistically a jedi couldn't do something like this because it would go against being a jedi (laughs) (laughs) well uh the jedi council Um, was just about to take control of the senate so i don't know that's true (laughs) i i think it does boil down to something we talked about earlier is you know how strongly the force is with you Mm mm-hmm because it would really go down to anticipating and sensing what's happening, sure. I think. Yes. Uh, because ultimately, yes, the Sith would be more likely to kill the troopers, but a uh, couple of well-placed shots in the back, yeah. like with <laughs> you know, with what happened to, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, which Jedi got shot in the back? And Plo Koon. That little, no, not the girl. Uh, Ayla Sakura? Uh, it's something like, I don't remember her name. Yeah, it was Kura. Yeah. <laughs> but it really would just be a matter of surprise. Yeah. Yes, the Sith could demolish them. <laughs> Have you, you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? You know, the one that got stabbed in his sleep or whatever? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> That's what you Darth have to do. Plagueis with them. the wise who got really drunk and then he died. <laughs> I, uh, I just saw a, a meme. I'll have to send it to you, but it was, um, so it was a scene from uh, episode six where like it had Palpatine in his chair and like there's Luke and Vader and he's like, have you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis the wise? And Vader's like, you're not, you're not helping. It's like, ah, oh, stop. You used to love this story when you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> old, old grandpa Palpatine up there just on his, yeah, you, you want to hear a cool story there, Luke? I used to tell it yes, to your but, dad all the time at operas. But ironically enough, that's kind of what happened to Palpatine too. <laughs> you ever hear the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? As Darth Vader's lifting him up into the air, he was so powerful, but he trusted his apprentice too much. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. All right. So let's see here. We have um, you know the droid droid episode as it continues on. And Maul creating destruction. <clears throat> Eventually, 
Ahsoka is able to trap Rex and, uh, you know, they're able to incapacitate him and put him in the space MRI. Yes. And of course the droids become a great low gurney. You know? yeah. just... <laughs> he's, he's got antennae just like on, like digging into his spine. <laughs> I mean, it's so dumb. They're flexible. They bent. It side. works. Okay. It, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't, uh, you know, uh, secure the neck or anything, but you know, they're not medical droids. They're astromax. It's, it's cool. Now, something I actually thought this was pretty cool, and during the midst of all this, you know, the troopers are cutting into this room, and they're getting ready to, you know, still take out Ahsoka, but couldn't find the chip until Ahsoka kind of uses the force to help identify it a little bit here on the scanner. Uh, does the, the jeering, I'm one with the force, and the force is with me, which was kind of cool. First time I think she's ever done that, I think actually. So. I think so. Yeah. You know, the chip force finding power. That's very important yeah. for the lore. Yeah. <laughs> this, and this I power... think it'd be funny if accidentally she ripped it out of him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, Rex, uh, who, what happened to Soka? Am I okay? Well, you don't Why have the chip. Why is my head bleeding? You don't have the chip anymore, but I ripped out your frontal lobe. So... Oh, yeah. So you I just got lobotomized. You know, <laughs> you, you, I don't know what's going to happen. So, yes, the, the new force ability, chip finding force power. That's what all the Jedi want. Such a, such a waste of potential. You know, she could have just <laughs> found the chip of every, every single one of them about a month ago. And, well. Hindsight. So anyway, as um, the operation is being done on Rex, again, the troopers are breaking through. Um, They finally do get through the door here. And (laughs) I do find this funny where she's like, close the door. Come on, droid, close the door. was like, what are you doing? Why isn't closing the door? And, uh, you know, again, she's, God, she's really doing some epic work here. Kind of like a Spartan 300 deal where you, where you have everybody in, but she is starting to be overwhelmed now, um, which is interesting and drops a lightsaber is down the one being pushed back. And then we see a few shots, take out some troopers as, as Rex, um, in the shortest brain surgery ever, is now yeah. back to Rex. Return of the Rex. <laughs> With a little band-aid on almost, his head. You could almost argue that Ahsoka used the force to disable the chip because I don't really think that that surgery happened. I think it was when he hit his head on the on the table earlier on. That's clearly what disabled it. <laughs> or, you know, the spinal damage from the antenna. <laughs> it, yeah, it, again, we don't want to dig too deep into that, but... Um, but anyway, this is basically where the episode ends. So they're they're trapped here, basically. Ahsoka and Rex and, and our droids. And, uh, the, you know, the door's being cut through again. So it's like, I kind of need a plan. It's okay. We have five more shutter doors. We'll be fine for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do think it's interesting because we now know that that really no trooper escaped order 66. Um, Rex did succumb to the programming. And I think that was always a question. It's like, well, did Rex like just not succumb to the programming? Did he just like fight it? Uh, That would have been cool, but no, he didn't. He, (laughs) and did you, did you find his apology kind of lame? He's like, Oh, (laughs) sorry. I could have, sorry, kid. I could have killed you. (laughs) It's like, oh, don't worry about it, Rex. I'm not dead yet. It just seems so weird. It's like, he was like, well, I know it wasn't my fault. I'm never going to have post-traumatic stress <laughs> disorder over this because I clearly know it wasn't my fault. Oh, yeah. okay. And do you think... I wonder that, if they're conscious at that point or if they're just kind of on autopilot. <laughs> I th- No, I, th- I, think, I think they are. I think it's just an overwhelming sort of like... Brainwashing in a yeah. way, almost. Yeah, yeah. So it actually even more potentially distressing when you think about it, if you were able to get out of the hold of the chip and then to come out of it, it's like, I knew what was going on. He, cause he did, he knew what was going on. It's like, I could have yeah. killed you. 
It's just, you know, Rex has, Rex is a robot. He's more machine than man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, kid. I could, geez, kid. I could have killed you. Okay, Rex. Um, whatever. Not sure how to respond to that. <laughs> sure, Rex. I'll never trust you again. But yeah, this is, this is the interesting part um, to see how they, well, what happens next. Do they escape? Do they take over the ship? They're going to have to kill every single one of these troopers and take over the ship. And uh, remind me again, because I'm blanking a bit. uh, When we eventually see Rex again in Rebels, he has two or three other buddies with him. I think it was two, right? I only remember one. I'm pretty sure that there were two others. I can't think of his name. So... Do you think maybe we'll get the origins of those guys as well? Maybe they're on this ship and they were able to turn them too, or maybe they're Could somebody be. else. I don't know. Yeah, because realistically, there were quite a few uh, clones that she just kind of slammed against doors and knocked out. So she could have, you know, done the quick five second surgery on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's so simple. Yeah, so simple. Have her own local clone army. It is kind of rough to see because, you know, you see all these scenes of these troopers showing respect and loyalty and love to Ahsoka, and then you have this happen, and it's just, well, in a way, it is heartbreaking. Well, this really is kind is. of her unit, too. Uh, you know, they're they're still wearing yeah, the Ahsoka colors and everything. All. Yeah. Well, she I don't, did she kill anyone, though? Cause I, maybe the first two troopers, but I think she's kind of... There's quite a few that she had to kill, actually. I guess I didn't really keep count. I know the and first two. Rex had to kill a couple too. Right. I well, I guess in this scene, yes, yeah, she did. But I, I well, and anyway. and when you think about when she sends Maul out, she knows that he's good, causes a lot of destruction. So she uh, did she like did she know she was going there? He was just going to go on a decapitation run. I don't know. Same maybe he thought it was Maul. a. Maybe he thought he was going to you know do a luck build or something. It wasn't wasn't a wasn't a tank build. Sneak build, thief, thief's yeah. guild for life. <laughs> oh, goodness. Darth Maul, use sleep powder. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick their pockets, Darth. Find all their Imperial credits. It'll be great. We'll need those. Put later. a thermal detonator in their pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Fr- frame them. Frame them with a ring you stole from somebody else. That's a Skyrim thing. Anyway, uh, very good episode. I was, I, I'm very satisfied with the end here. Um, again, you know, we've said this so many times and it, it, it's just, it just continues to come to mind. It's like, I think we were kind of disappointed with the way the season started, but it is so making up for it right now. Oh, it is. I would take the three episodes we just had over 22 uh, episode season any day. Yeah. Any day. I'd rather have this than a bunch of decent filler, honestly. Yep. And again, just begs the question. You could just made this all in one big movie and just released it. You know, I was just going to say that we really could have just done a two hour movie and (laughs) not have the first two arcs at all. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So let's go ahead. And before we cut off, let's speculate a little bit. What do you think we're going to see in our final episode? Well, we already know there's some uh, there's some teaser trailer stuff out with Darth Vader on a snow planet. Um, that is, I don't watch spoilers. That's fine. That's fine. Well, I just spoiled it for you. But uh, obviously, I think we're gonna see some with Anakin. Maybe some. I think we're gonna have. I think that Obi Wan is gonna contact Ahsoka. Hmm. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to tell her about Luke or Leia. I think it's going to be post all that. I don't, but, I don't know. I mean, it's been a while since I read the Ahsoka book. I don't remember if she ever had any, con- uh, any contact with anybody. Well, the only problem okay. is, you know, we can look at rebels in the Ahsoka book, but ultimately it's, it's lazy in a way, but you really could just say, well, she had contact with it, and it's just never mentioned again. Mm. You know, you, you mm-hmm. could, it, sure. it could happen. It, it is a bit lazy, but I, I really feel like we're going to have some kind of interaction between her and a surviving Jedi. I don't think she'll be completely just, you know, just completely 
cut off from them okay. completely. Um, but I do think that we're going to have some more with Rex. I don't think she's just going to escape and then no, they, they go their separate right. ways. I, I, I think Rex is going to be there for the entire episode. Yes. Um, I'm assuming that we're still following Ahsoka at this point, not someone else, which could happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I think we might have some kind of contact with a Jedi. Mm-hmm. I think that Obi-Wan would be the most fitting, but uh, I don't know. Part of me kind of feels like it would be really cool and touching in a way that even through all the rage and hatred and, you know, everything going on that maybe Darth Vader is able to send some kind of secret transmission and hope that she receives it. Maybe she does. But obviously we know we can't have that because she doesn't know that's Anakin until Rebels. Or maybe some kind of uh, transmission while he was still on Mustafar before his battle with Obi-Wan that she finds mm. down the line. Some kind of recording that he leaves for her. Mm-hmm. Well, know, and that, an apology that... of some kind that he wasn't a better master. Or, yeah. You know, well, well, regret that... for losing that friendship, something. Well, that that is an interesting thing. Obviously, when we had our prequels, there was no mention of Ahsoka Tano. But it does kind of it is kind of interesting because the sequence of events are, you know, Padme is going to come to Mustafar, and you know die from a broken heart and then there'll be the battle with obi-wan <laughs> well i mean kind of uh so it does kind of beg the question w- without thinking too deeply into or w- without uh being too realistic about time frames of when characters are written did I mean, did he give any thought to Ahsoka? Because at that point, it's like, yeah, all the Jedi are being killed. But d- because he's so loyal to his friends, and he's even loyal to his friends up until the end, uh, in a way, I think he even kind of would have liked to, to have had Obi-Wan alive. But yeah. does he, he have... to turn him, that's... Right. But does he have, so... a, does he have any sort of thought about maybe Ahsoka is alive. Maybe I can try and reach out to her and get her here or like, you know, something like that. It's kind of a rail Avaros and Dooku type deal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I I think that that's, that's something to be considered. I don't think we're going to see it, but um, you, you had mentioned there's one scene in revenge of the Sith that kind of makes you give pause. Uh, when Anakin is almost far after killing the separatists, there is this little scene where he's crying. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, he had just killed all those younglings. The gravity of what he's done is sinking in and he's, he's, he's losing, you know, mm. the last bit of good in him at this point. He's kind of mourning it in a way, but, you know, he had such a connection to all these Jedi Regardless of his hatred, he had a lot of friends in the Jedi Order, and obviously Ahsoka would be one of them. So right. maybe this scene in Revenge of the Sith when he's crying, maybe he's mourning Ahsoka, assuming that she was killed. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. that maybe that will be our little interaction in a way. You know, maybe he tries to contact her but doesn't get a hold of her. Mm. Uh, maybe mm. he sees some kind of recording on that ship mm-hmm. and sees the battle between Ahsoka and Rex and assumes she gets killed. Right. No, right. I, I, I hope there's something like that because even at this point, there's still some good in him. And I think we're going to see some regret in this episode. From okay. Him. Maybe, um, you know, you had mentioned about maybe having contact with a Jedi and, you know, Obi-Wan had sent out like kind of a, a message, general message to the Jedi. And I kind of, I, I've always kind of thought about It's like, has she not seen this? I feel like she would have seen that. So yeah. I don't think she'll actually directly talk to Obi Wan. I, I I think that Obi Wan that's already set sail, but it would be interesting to see if there was anything, uh, any sort of postscript with between her and Anakin, and then prop. I I feel like she would have seen that that you know general sort of message from Kenobi, and then obviously they have to figure a way off of this ship. So. 
I'm not quite sure exactly how that's going to be, but I think I think the end of this show is going to be where we kind of have them burying their past, uh, sort of literally, uh, and creating false graves where Ahsoka then buries her sabers. So I kind of think that that'll be the end of the episode, and then that at that point, that's where they part company, and then she enters the Ahsoka book, and then Rex, you know, goes off and fishes for s- giant sandworms. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Giant mech, sandworms. It's cool living. Get a little fat. Yeah. Eventually, end up on Endor. It's great. Yeah. I saw this theory earlier that. Uh, Ahsoka is actually in one of the Star Wars movies because <laughs> and bear with me here. Um, there's a scene um, with a youngling that is Ahsoka's species that Yoda's talking with in the libraries. Hmm. Um, and there's rumors that that's actually Ahsoka, which would be an interesting tie. And in. obviously I don't think it's a foresight thing, but uh Kind of cool if they'd be able to make that tie, and I don't know if the age would work. Mm-hmm. Not that much time between that library scene and her well, I th- getting I think, sent in to be Anakin's Padawan. I, I think Not, people like really to, matter a whole lot, no. I, I think but, they like to see what they want to. Well, there, there's, there's the whole thing about the the old white bearded guy on Endor during Battle of Endor, and I don't know if that has actually been officially confirmed. But I know there's a lot of people that say that that is where Rex winds up on the battle of Endor. Really? Yes. Yeah. I don't think the clones survived that long. I think with their accelerated growth that he would have already died at that point. No, uh, he sure was though, clearly obviously. there. <laughs> clearly. Re- he had a white beard. <laughs> okay. But isn't rebels kind of set at the very beginning of, uh, mm. not the beginning, but maybe like 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Eh, it's somewhere in that time pretty, frame. Pretty yeah. old at that, and he's already pretty old at that point. I just I don't see him surviving that long. I mean, Kind of a cool concept. Maybe you should uh, just stop. A clone. Maybe you should just stop questioning things and just accept it. Sure. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, I think, uh, I think we can go ahead and wrap up for the day, but uh, great episode. Very glad to see the end of this series, uh, you know, definitely coming to a satisfying head. Uh, so if you'd like to follow the podcast at all, make sure to check us out on Twitter at TC plan podcast on Facebook, or you can always send us an email to TC plan podcast at gmail.com. Uh, send us your stories or uh, what you thought of the episode, uh, anything to that effect. And if you want something talked about on the show, we will certainly do that. Uh, but yeah, I guess aside from that, I will, uh, you know, catch you down the road. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week. Yes. And if I'm correct with when this will air, uh, may the fourth be with you.